Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Keith and I'm sure glad you stopped by today. In today's video, we're going to continue on a series we put together for you on how to use a multimeter. Specifically, how to use a multimeter to test fuses. In the first video, we showed you how to do the continuity test using a multimeter. And in today's video, we're going to show you how to do a resistance test using a multimeter. If you want to take a look at that playlist in its entirety, I drop a card up above and I'll drop a link down in the description below. Let's dive in. Users can come in different shapes and sizes. However, the way they work is pretty much the same. There are going to be two sides of a fuse along with a fusible link in between the two sides. When a fuse is good, electricity is going to be able to flow from one side of the fuse to the other. When a fuse is bad, there's a break somewhere in the link and electricity can't flow from one side to the other. If that's the case, we call the fuse either bad or blown. When performing a resistance test on a fuse, it's important that we remove the fuse from the fuse panel. Not doing so can cause incorrect resistance readings on your multimeter. Now, let's properly configure our multimeter for resistance testing. Make sure your black lead is plugged into the COM port and make sure your red lead is plugged into the port label resistance. Now this is going to be denoted with the resistance symbol which looks like a horseshoe. It's the Greek Omega sign. That's the resistance symbol. Set the dial to the resistance setting. Next, verify our multimeter and leads are configured properly. We're going to simply touch our two probes together. If your meter is properly configured, you should get a resistance of virtually zero. If you don't see a reading of zero, double check the settings of your multimeter. Now, we're ready to test our fuses. We're going to test a variety of fuses for you today. However, the technique we use is going to be exactly the same. Take one of your probes, it doesn't matter which one it is, touch it to one side of the fuse, and take your other probe and touch it to the other side of the fuse. If the fuse is good, you should see a resistance value of zero or virtually zero on the display. If your display doesn't change or you see a resistance value other than zero, your fuse is bad and needs to be replaced. We just took you step by step on how to perform a resistance test on a fuse using a multimeter. I mentioned to you that you should always remove the fuse from the fuse panel before doing this test. I don't want you to just take my word for it though. Let's head over to the whiteboard and let me show you why this is an important and necessary step. So now let's just step through how a multimeter here is able to measure the resistance of our fuse which is up here. So the multimeter is going to apply a small amount of electricity um, from one probe and it's going to travel through the fuse and go to the other probe. That's going to be represented by current. So current is going to be represented by I. So as the multimeter applies a small amount of current it can then measure the voltage drop across this fuse. So with current and voltage already known and it measures the voltage drop, this multimeter then can use Ohm's law, which is voltage is equal to current times resistance to solve for the resistance of this fuse. So if we just take V is equal to IR and we solve for resistance, we have voltage over current is equal to resistance. And that's the value that gets played that gets displayed on your multimeter. Now, the way this works again is that this multimeter is the source of electricity. It's applying the electricity through this current. It's measuring the voltage drop. Since current's known, voltage is known, it can then use Ohm's law to solve for the resistance. And this is the value that gets played on your meter. So this is the con what the configuration looks like when you remove the fuse from the fuse panel like we did in our uh, test and connect the red probe and the black probe directly to the fuse. So this is the proper way to test the fuse with it removed. Now let's talk about what the configuration looks like when you try to test with the fuse in the fuse box. 
So now let's look at this configuration. This is a test configuration when you simply try to connect your multimeter to a fuse and the fuse is still in your fuse panel. So again, this is the multimeter. The multimeter is going to pass electricity through the fuse. We have this current flow as represented in I2. The problem comes into play is that when you do this test, this multimeter is assuming that it is the only source of electricity. However, we have our battery, which is also the source of electricity in this test. Because this fuse is still in the fuse panel, we've not isolated the battery. It's still coming into play. So the current actually flowing through this fuse is going to be um, combined with the current coming from the multimeter. And then you got current coming from the battery itself. So that's going to throw off the calculation of your multimeter, which is trying to use Ohm's law to solve for this resistance. But this current, again, you got this um, current from the battery that's creeping into this calculation. And that's what throws off your, uh, your test results. So, again, this is why I didn't want you to just take my word for it. I wanted to show you this so that you have a better understanding of why it's good practice to remove your fuse from the fuse panel when you're doing a resistance test. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, hit that subscribe button and click that bell so anytime we drop a new video, you'll be the first to know. Hit that like button and leave me some comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you're interested in any of the products we used in today's video, we'll leave some links down below. Hope you have an awesome day, and thanks for watching.